friends. You know what? It's time for test two. Here we go. Another test two review problem. If I was writing your test question, what would I put on there? This is the perfect question, right? What do we got here? I ask you to find the tensile at the maximum tensile and compressive stress in that beam with that load on it. Okay. It has, oh, has a funky cross section, doesn't it? Let's see if we can do it. Okay. Now, if we're talking about tensile and compressive stress, what are we talking about? We're talking about bending, right? M, C over I. How do I find the things in that equation? Mm, there's quite a bit going on here, right? I guess we could start off with the cross section over here and just find the easy stuff, right? Like I and C, okay? So let's start over here and let's see, you know, I gotta find the centroid of this thing, don't I? Okay, that will give me the neutral axis. Okay, so where does it live? You know, I think what I'll do, I think I'll do this. I'll divide it there and there, and I'll call this piece number one, number two, and piece number three, okay? Let's make a table, okay? Piece number one, two, and three. And what are we after here? I'll tell you what we're after. We're after, where does that neutral axis live? That's Y bar, okay? We're after Y bar. All right. Let's see if we can find him, okay? Let's see, what do we got here? We got Y, we got A, and we got YA. Okay. So what is Y bar for piece number one? Well, it's half of 25. It's 12.5. What's the area of piece number one? 250 times 25. How much is that? 250 times 25. Well, that's 62.50. Okay, and then times 12.5. That's 78,125. Okay, next, piece number two. What's Y bar? Okay, it is 150 tall, so half of that is 75, but you gotta measure it from the bottom. So what do we gotta come up? 25 plus another 75, that puts us at 100. And what is the area of that guy? Well, you didn't tell us that. Uh, let's see, this width here, is, I don't know, let's say it's 20, okay, 20 millimeters. So 20 times 150, I'm putting this in my calculator, I should, I know it's 3,000, times 150 equals, oh, 20 times 150, it's 3,000, what a surprise, okay, and then times 100 is 3,000, with two more zeros on it, 300,000, okay, and then piece number three, piece number three, where's the center of this guy? I gotta go 25 plus 150 is 175, and then half of 10 is five, 175 plus five more, 180. Okay, 180, and then it's 400 by 10, which is 4,000. And then 4,000, 4,000 times 180 is, ooh, 720,000. Okay. Now, what do I need? I need the sum of the A's, and I need the sum of the YA's. That'll give me a Y bar, won't it? Okay, so 6,250 plus 3,000 plus 4,000 is 13,250. Okay, and YA is 78,125 plus 300,000 plus 720,000, one, two, three, four, yep, equals 109, 109, 8125, okay, all right. So what is that going to be? 
divided by 13,250, which is 82.87. Let's call it 82.9, shall we? Okay, so from the bottom of the part to the centroid is 82.9 mm's. Now what I like to do is also go ahead while you're here, right? Go ahead and give me the dimension to the top of the part. Okay, maybe that, you know what, that's going to be helpful because this, the top of the part, the beam is going to bend like this, right? And so the top of the beam is going to be in compression and the bottom of the beam is going to be in tension, right? So when I'm talking about C, right, for my MC over I, then I need from here down for one and I need from here up for the other. So it's good to go ahead and get that dimension, right? So that's, uh, how much is that? 150 plus 25 is 175 plus 10 more is 185. So 185 minus answer means that it's 102.12. 102 point one mm's to the top, okay? That's not all we can get from that though, is it? We can, we can go ahead and we can calculate. So we got C, right? So like C for, we'll put a C there for compressive, and then we've got C for tensile. For compressive, since it's the top of the beam, C is going to be 102.1 mm's. And for tension, it's the bottom of the beam. It's going to be 82.9 mm's, okay? So there's two of the things that we need. Now we need to get I. So can we get I? Sure, we can. We calculated this a million times, haven't we, gang? One twelfth. Let's do three of them. Piece one, piece two, piece three. So piece one, the base, 250. The height, 25. BH cubed plus, what is this, parallel axis theorem? A, A is uh, right there, 6250. Okay, and then what's D? Remember how to calculate D? You take that number, the Y bar, 82.9, and you just subtract that number from it, and it gives it to you every time. Minus 12.5. Bam. 70.4. And that's uh, BH, no, AD squared. Okay, here we go, plus, here comes piece number two. That was all for piece number one. So piece number two, one twelfth, the base, 20, the height, 150, cubed, plus the area, 3,000, times D, which is 82.9, minus, bam, 100 equals 17.1 squared plus, here comes piece number three, one twelfth, the base, 400 times the height, 10 cubed plus A, 4,000 times D, 82.9 minus, uh, 180 is 97.1. Okay? Now, how easy would it be to put that in your calculator incorrectly? Very. Okay? Here we go. I'm going to do this real fast. 250 times 25 cubed equals divided by 12 equals plus 6250 times 70.4 squared equals, okay, there's piece number one. Piece number one is 31301520.8, okay? Piece number two, 20 times 150 cubed equals divided by 12 equals plus 3,000 times 
17.1 squared equals 6502230, okay, plus one more, 400 times 10 cubed equals divided by 12 equals plus 4,000 times 97.1 squared equals whew, 37746973.3. Okay, so plus 6502230 plus 3130152000. Point eight equals oh my goodness. So here's I seven five 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 zero seven two four point one three millimeters to the fourth. Bam, there it is. Okay. Hey, we knew it was gonna be big, it's in millimeters. Don't be scared when you get a big number in millimeters, okay? So that's kind of a biggie. So we've got C, we've got I. So who do we need? We need that guy. What's the biggest bending moment on that beam? You know what's in front of us right now, don't you? It looks like a shear moment diagram kind of problem. Shear moment diagram kind of day. Let's go, I love shear moment diagrams. I am so good at them, I'm gonna help you out, okay? Woo! So good at them. Here we go. Okay. Here's V. Here's M. V is going to be in kilonewtons. M is going to be in kilonewton meters. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, here we go, gang. Putting a dashed line everywhere. I think something interesting is going to happen. We call those discontinuities. Okay, and really, truly, this is not a discontinuity on this graph up here because that moment will only affect the moment graph, not the shear graph, but it's okay. All right, step one, find global equilibrium. Okay, let me turn these guys here into a ah, concentrated load, right? Three times eight, 24 kilonewtons. What is that guy? Bam. Okay. A, no. I gotta tell you another dimension here, don't I? Let me tell you another dimension. Let's let's change that eight. Well, he won't change him. We'll make him an eight, but we'll just make this guy five and we'll make that guy three. Okay. Kind of left the dimension out of there, didn't I? Oh, and we need a discontinuity right there, don't we? Okay. Now maybe I got my stuff together. 5 times 3 is 15, divided by 2 is 7.5, okay? I think that, uh, I think I can do this. I think we can do a little global equilibrium now, right? We've got an AY over here. We've got a, a BY over there, okay? And so we need to find AY and BY. We need to find those global equilibriums. So let's go over here and do that. Let's take the sum of the moments at A. Okay, so what do we got? 24 negative times four. So minus 24 times four, okay? Minus 25, whoop, also negative times nine. Minus 25 times nine, okay? And then is that a moment? Yeah, that's a burrito force, right? He already has mm, all the good stuff built into him. He's got force and distance. So we just put him in our equation. Look, I drew that the other way, so that's positive. So let's just put a plus 50, okay? And then we've got minus 7.5. Ooh, times how far away? Times the distance, 8, 9, 10, 13, 13, plus 0.6666666, two-thirds, of five times five equals 16.333, right? OK, 
okay? And then BY, which rotates me back the other way. Comes how far away is that? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 18. Okay. I took a pause right in the middle and gave me a little bit more space over here to work. I raced I. I hope you're okay with that. Okay, so let's find BY, shall we? Okay. So 24 times 4 plus 25 times 9 minus 50 plus 7.5 times 16.3333 equals divided by 18 equals 21.86. Okay, so what does that mean AY has to equal? Now I know you, right? I know you, 21.86. Well, up stuff has to equal the down stuff, right? So going down, I got what, 49 plus 7.5 more is 56.5. So 56.5 minus answer equals, that means that BY has to be 34.64. Okay, kilonewtons, okay? So you, 34.64 kilonewtons, okay? All right, I think we're ready to plot. One thing I want you to remember is, remember my little trick to order of the lines? If I have something like this, the next graph is like this, then a slope, then a parabolic, then a cubic. If you don't remember that, you can go back and review those. Okay, so let's plot this okay so here we go all right now this is a remember this is a kitchen force so in the kitchen clock is above counter is below this is counter so this is going to go downhill right when i get to that now i didn't draw this here because he's only going to affect the m diagram not the v diagram okay so here we go i got i start off at zero what am I going to do? I hit this 34.64 Van Halen force. Might as well jump. Go ahead and jump. Okay, then what? So I'm at I'm at 34.69, right? 34.69. Then I'm going to go down 24. 34.69. I can't believe I'm putting this in my calculator. 10.69. Okay. 10.69. How do I get there? This is straight across, so the next graph down, just a straight slope, okay? No change, no change, no change, bam, 25. I'm at 10.69 minus 25, takes me to negative 14.31, 14.31, whoop, straight down. Then no change, no change, no change. Notice I just drove right past that 50 because he affects my moment diagram but not my v diagram okay now what i'm going to go down some more 7.5 so minus 7.5 more is going to take me to 21.81 okay to the negative okay and how do i get there slow then fast slow then fast and then Boom, John Denver force. Well, it's off just a skosh. Yeah, we had a little bit of rounding, but I think that that's 0 0.05. That's gonna be close enough, okay? So, John Denver force, take me home to the place I belong on my shear graph. Back to zero, okay, everybody. Okay, so let me put a little plus there, a little plus there, a little minus there, okay? A little minus there and a little minus over there okay anything above the graph up above the line is going to give me a positive slope down here anything below the line is going to give me a negative slope down here so now I'm going to uphill uphill and then I'm going to jump here down and then downhill 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 right that's what my graphs gonna look like so let's go let's start off we start off at zero when's the only time you don't start off at zero when you have a concentrated moment at A, 
But we have a pin connection. There's no moment in a pin connection, okay? So what are we gonna do? Well, here's what we're gonna do first. Before we do anything, let's do the graphic method and let's identify the areas of these shapes. Let's see if, let's see if the old man can do it, okay? So first off, I've got an area, I've got a rectangle and a triangle. The rectangle is 10.69 times eight, right? Plus one half point five times eight times 24 is the height, right? So that's 181.52, 181.52. Okay, the next one is 10.69 times one. I got it, I got it. The next one, 14.31 times one, 14.31. The next one, 14.31, 14.31 times three, 42.93, 42.93. And then the last one, what do we got over there? We got a rectangle. And we got a, an X parabolic shape, or we call it a parabolic spandrel. And I just happen to remember that the equation for those is one third the base times the height, okay? So what's the total area over there? 14.31 times five plus a third, 0.33333 times 7.5 times five. 84.3. Mm, oh five. So this guy here, 84.05. Now remember the area is height, which is in kilonewtons, times width, which is in meters. That's kilonewton meters. That's a moment. Okay? So those numbers there that we got are our moment numbers. Let's go. We're fixing to get our answer, aren't we? Okay? Step one, let's graph this thing here. We're on about step 12, aren't we? Okay, I start off at zero. I'm gonna go up 182, 81.52, which is like there, right? How do I get there? Fast, then slow. So that's like this, whoop, okay? So this number here, 181.52. Again, that's kilo, newton, meters. Next, I'm gonna go up some more, 10.69. How do I get there? Ooh, that's gonna be a straight slope, isn't it? Okay, what's that number gonna be? 181.52 plus another 10.69, 192.21. Okay. Now we're gonna start going downhill. That may be our number right there, right? Because what are we gonna have? We're gonna have a humpy doodle on our graph and then everything's gonna start going downhill. That's probably the biggest moment, bending moment on the graph, right? Matter of fact, I know it is, but we're gonna figure it out anyway, okay? So now I hit this guy. No, I don't wanna hit this guy. I go downhill 14.31, right? So I'm at 192.21 minus 14.31 takes me to 177.9. 177.9. Now do I get there? Straight slope. Now I hit that burrito force, which says go down 50. Bloop. Which takes me to 127.9. Then go down 42.93. So minus 50 equals minus 42.93 equals 84.1, okay? Here is 84.1, straight slope. And then I got 84.05, which again, I got a little bit of rounding. I'm okay with that, right? So that's gonna take me to, back to zero, and how do I get there? Uh, slow, then fast, right? So slow, then fast. Back to zero. So there's my slope graph, okay? My moment graph, rather, okay? So all of that, all of that work was to get that number right there, right? That is the maximum bending moment on that beam, okay? Whew. Now, we can go back and we can do this. The one thing that we're 
the whole thing that we're been after, okay? So I've got two sigmas I need to find. I need to find compressive, and I need to find sigma tensile, okay? So what's it going to be, MC over I? M, the bending moment. Bam, there it is. 192.21 kilonewton meters, okay? Kilonewton meters. Oh, I don't know about kilonewton meters. Because can I do this? Can I do this? Can I, um, one, two, three. Can I do that? Newton meters. And then let's get rid of the meters. I'll put a meter on the bottom and a thousand on the top. Right? M, M's. Burp, burp. Okay. And then times C. C for compressive. 102.1. MMs divided by I, where is I? It was giant. There it is. 75,550,000, uh, 724.13 millimeters to the fourth. Millimeters, millimeters, right? So that gives me the reason I turn that into Newtons is now I got Newtons over millimeters squared. Dang, I know that's a megapascal, isn't it? So 192.210 times 1,000 times 102.1 equals divided by 75.550.724.13 is equal to all of that. Sigma compressive, right? Now where am I going to put this? Right here. Sigma C is 259.8 megapascals. Okay. What about the tensile guy? That's the one that's on the bottom of the beam. Okay. So that's going to be same bending moment, 192, 210 times 1,000, times times 102, nope, times 82.9, divided by, big Bertha there, 75.550.724.13, so sigma tensile is equal to, here we go, 192.210, times 1,000, times 82.9, equals, divided by 75, 550724.13, equals, there we go, 210.9 megapascals. Okay, woo! If you can do that, man, I don't know how in the world they throw something at you that you can't do for this test, okay? So I hope you pushed pause and you just caught up to me and you said, hey, that's what I got too, okay? So cool. All right. I hope that helps. Let's make 100 on this test, y'all. See you on the next video.